Hello, my friends. Together on trying to beat the rain, so we'll see what we can do. We may have to cut this short if it starts raining, but I want us to begin, as we always do, with touching some element of nature. So I want you to ground yourself, just feel your feet on the ground. I want you to touch some element of nature. I can see some of the buds on the tree that are obviously ready for the spring, but got a long way to go. <laughs> Whatever it might be that you want to touch or engage with. Are you ready to begin? Three, two, and one. Off we go. Now, I have to confess, as we get going here, this is my first run. Um, I've taken four days off, and the last time I ran was um, a 28-minute run because I got, I was supposed to be doing a two hour long run. I'm well, not supposed to be, but I'd chosen to do a two hour long run and just knew, just knew by like 10 minutes in that it wasn't a good idea. You can probably hear my voice is still a bit nasally. Um, I've had a really nasty cold. Um, you know, I have two young kids under four. They both go to, daycare, preschool, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so, you know, <laughs> the group, because after the pandemic of not really getting any germs for a few years, they both are pretty much constantly sick. And um, most of the time I didn't get it. I did get some. But this recent one just knocked me. Uh, I mean, you know how usually... But at least for me, usually when I get a cold, I have like one day of sneezing, one day of kind of a sore nose while I um, kind of feeling the urge to sneeze. Like it's kind of starting to, you know, clog up, I suppose. Then you have a few days of getting the junk out and then it's gone. This, I had four days of sneezing. Four days. Like, and so each stage, it reminded me of being pregnant again. Each stage has been extended. Um, and so I'm about 11 or 12 days into this. The gross, goopy stuff is minimal now. Like, <laughs> let's say I'm blowing my nose to get that out maybe 15 times a day. Whereas before it was 15 times in an hour. Um, but still, it really knocked me out. And um, I, uh, I just got that gut feeling at the beginning of that long run, that little whisper that we hear sometimes saying, turn back, turn back. And in that moment, it took me a second to take up the courage but I said to my training partner I need to go back and then I proceeded to bike alongside him and it was like 15 degrees which actually generally I was pretty warm but I didn't change my socks and shoes and it was snowy outside and so my feet had got wet and so that was they were very very cold however Steve has informed me that as he bikes alongside his team a lot, um, he's informed me that it doesn't matter how many layers you wear or how dry everything is with running shoes on a bike, that kind of weather, you're going to feel the cold. There's no way around it because it's just not, you just let the wind through. So yeah, so we're going to try this run today. My first run back and um, we'll see how it goes. So a few minutes later than usual, we're gonna begin our body scan in just a minute. If you're a first time together runner, welcome. I'm excited that you are here and excited you get to join me today. My first run back in, a, in five days and uh, I'll see how I feel. So it'll be interesting to talk through some stuff 
hopefully it won't rain. If it does, I may jump in and we can I'll split it into two or something, I don't know. Um, so I really would like to get a run in, but I don't know how this mic is going to handle rain. So we'll see. All right, so if you're a first time together runner, one of the first things we do early on is a body scan. And that means we're going to scan down from the top of our head to the bottom of our toes. We're going to do it together. And this is just again to check in with our bodies, to see how we're feeling, and just to really be present inside in this moment before we work our way to the outside surroundings. So you ready? I'm gonna call call the parts out for you. Starting at the top of your head, working your way down. If you work down into your eyes, making sure they're not scrunched or holding onto any tension. So continue down through your nose, around the back of your head, going down into your mouth, continuing on into your chin, going around the back, down the back of your neck and the front of your neck. As you go down into your shoulders, into your upper arms and lower arms, around the elbow, going into the wrist and hand, into the fingers. As you come back to the main part of your torso, checking in with your stomach and into your lower back. So you work your way down into your hips and pelvis, checking in there, whatever way feels right to you. As you continue down, going into your quads and hamstrings. As you keep on working your way down through the back of your knee, front of your knee, into your calf and shin, into your inner ankle and your outer ankle, continuing down into the heel, checking in with your arch and the top of your arch, the ball of your foot, and finally into your toes. How's everything feeling? For me, a little ache in the heel, a little tightness in the chest, a little cold in the fingers. There's a few things that come to mind for me. We're going to go into our external check-in, our senses check-in, which is going to be, we're going to work our way through our five primary senses, ending with sight, as that's our overused sense for most of us. And so, as always, I'm going to ask you today to take three breaths as deep as you can while you're running, and let's just check in there. It's okay if you need a second in between those breaths because again (laughs) we are running. What do you smell? I'll be honest, I still don't really smell much. Uh, Yesterday I said goodbye to my parents. Normally sniffing my mum's neck is one of the things that I do in that final moment with them and I couldn't couldn't sniff her properly. And I'm not going to show you, but I've still got that like, like the not quite clear nostrils yet take a sniff. 
for at least a detailed sniff in this situation. What do you taste? I'm going to taste the chocolate, I think, not long before I went out the door. Next, I'm going to go on to what we hear, and that's going to involve either you taking your headphones out or not, it's up to you. I'm just going to spend 45 seconds or so just listening, being in your ears. What is it you hear? Just paying attention to the different sounds, letting your awareness go where it does. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that now. few more seconds. Okay. What is it you smell? Oh, sorry. <laughs> what is it you hear? For me, I heard that bird going, <laughs> I heard the wind going by my ears, you hear cars in the distance, and my feet hitting the ground. Next, I'm going to ask you to just pay attention to your outer body, where your awareness jumps through your sense of touch, your tactile sense, and just see how you feel, what's where your awareness is going. And maybe it's settling on something that feels different or feels off. If it is something that is painful, that continues to hurt you with every run, this is my moment to encourage you. Go check that, get it checked out. Go see a professional. It's probably not gonna go away on its own. So she who has mentioned about my heel and multiple ones of these now <laughs> but that doesn't seem to be getting any worse and it's not on every run so I can maybe lean on that a little bit but <laughs> probably not probably should too however if you're training for something definitely encourage you to go do that okay so let's just go ahead be in your body, your attention may jump from place to place, or it may just sit on something that feels a bit different. So let's go ahead and do that now. seconds. Where was that? Okay. What was it you felt? Where was your attention being drawn to? 
at me. My attention was in my nose, uh, on my fingers, which are cold, and my toes. Those are some of the areas that jumped out. Okay, and finally, our sense of vision. As always, you can follow your attention where it goes with your eyesight and your vision. But as always, the one thing I ask of you is that you find a detail somewhere in something you are looking at. Find a small detail or something that you wouldn't normally pay attention to. Even if you've run the sleep hundreds of thousands of times, what do you see that's different today? Let's go ahead and do that now. that you saw? What was a small detail that drew your eye today? Okay, next, as we always do, we're going to go on to do our mental health check-in. So, as always, I'm going to let you start. If we were running side by side, and I said, how are you, really? What would you say? What, even if you weren't confident or comfortable sharing it with me in the moment, if we were running together, what would you say to yourself about how you are, really? And I don't want a one word answer, of good or fine or okay, go deeper. Go ahead and answer that now. And first, actually, before I do that, I apologise. I'm going to about to blow my nose out. <laughs> Sorry, friends. Right. How are you, really?
drift it off. Gently bring yourself back. Go deeper. few more seconds. Okay, thank you for checking in, you know, even if you wouldn't actually have shared, it's nice to at least admit to ourselves how we're doing, and just to have that quiet time to reflect, if nothing else. So, my turn. How am I? Really. First thing that comes to mind is... A little bit panicked about, you know, I've taken these days off and I still don't really feel great. And that could be that I've taken these days off and I'm just, you know, haven't run in a few days. And sometimes when you don't, you feel a bit rusty, I suppose. Could be that. Could be I haven't slept very well the last few nights. Could be many things. But there's always that lingering of like, is this something else? Could my sickness have been something bigger than I'm giving it credit for? Um, Why do I feel so like tired still? Um, So that is in the front of my mind as we prepare this run. But in general, how am I still feeling a bit sad? Many of you may have seen my blubbering video on Instagram as I said goodbye to my mum and dad at the airport the other day. Um, I always am like that. I always cry. I always cry even more than I did on that video when I get in the car and start driving home. But, um, I don't know, I just felt it was important to share, to show that human side, and to show that is the difficult part about my life, that while I love living here, and I love my life, I am sacrificing <clears throat> that time with my family, moments with my family, And yes, you can make the argument, and I very much agree that um, the time with my family that I do spend is more appreciated and kind of special because it's not taken for granted. But still, it's very hard, and I do still feel a little bit sad from it. Just um, not having... You know, not knowing when I'm going to see him again and just knowing that, you know, someday I'm going to not be, they're not going to be able to come here and I'm going to see him even less and it's just sad. So that's, I still feel a bit sad about that. I um, feel very loved. So many kind words said by friends and family about that and just in general and having had a really nice few weeks with my parents was really special and I'm thankful that 
while our relationship is far from perfect. We, I have a good relationship with them and I'm grateful for that. I know that's not the case for everyone. So is that anything else? We are going to Portland, we'll be in Portland, hopefully, by the time you listen to this. And uh, I am excited about it. So a little apprehensive, but yeah, mostly excited to go visit Steve's family. Um, and so yeah, just it's you know quite a lot for us to. The girls have obviously been bouncing off the walls with sugar and chocolate, and just out of their rhythm. And Bailey is very much a routine kid. Um, and we've got like a few days. But we've got to catch up, both of us, on work. So much to do, especially me. Steve was able to do a bit more than me, but I kept putting mine off because I wanted to be my, my parents. Um, but now I've got a few days to cram and settle before we head off. So, yeah, that's uh, about it from me. Um, we're going to... About four minutes to go till strides. And you know what? I think I'm going to make this be a 45 minute run. Just again, that little gut feeling is saying, don't overdo it. And while I think you can make the argument of like, okay, well, why not go back for 30? If you're feeling tired, if you're not feeling great, why push on to 45? Yeah, you could make that argument. I also think I could say to myself, well, you know, it's sometimes you have got to push the boundary a little bit just to see how you are doing. Um, and yeah, I'm very much the intuitive gut person. And my gut's saying, give it 45 see how you go not that I'm going to push it back to an hour I'm going to cut it there and commit to that but yeah so um okay uh, what else okay so let's go ahead I don't want to start anything that I'm going to get carried away and forget the 30 minute mark um what else what haven't I shared I'll begin updates properly, but um, one thing that's coming to mind is I wrote an article for the UN about waste. It's called Whose Trash Is It Anyway? And it's actually not so much what you would think, but I think people think would be like, oh, you know, recycle your waste and do a better job. It's actually kind of the opposite in that it's like making us go higher, think more up the chain in terms of who does trash belong to. And so I'm really proud that that's on the UN website. And uh, if you feel comfortable, or I will put a link in the show notes so you can go take a read of it, because I'm really proud of it. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and what it made you think about doing. Um, okay, so it's a shame because I was kind of looking forward to doing some reflection questions. I know as you listen to this, we'll be into 20, um, we'll be into 2023. Oh, that's weird to think about. But what can, I might spend the next 15 minutes rather than my updates just having us do some reflections. Um, expand on doing an extended one, but again, I want to be smart for myself and my body. So we're just going to do a shortened version. But first, we are going to do the strides. So I'll explain it now. So at 30 minutes, if you're in the 30 minute group, you'll come to a walk. I'll give you about 30 seconds to walk. And then we're going to go ahead and do two strides. 
was about 30 to 45 seconds between. And a stride is going to be 10 to 15 seconds, running at about 80% of your max. So if a sprint is 100%, you're running about 80%. And we're just going to do it for 10 to 15 seconds. That's all. And uh, it's just to wake the legs up. The rest of us are going to do it with a jog in between, just as we can kind of do that. And it's something we do often here. Just to, it's just good for us. And feel free to do it in your other runs as well. All right, so come to a walk. If you're in a 30 minute group, you're in the 45 minute group or beyond you can uh, keep running let's give you about 15 more seconds and we'll go ahead and do that and then I'll send you on your way okay three Two and one, off you go. Right, come to a jog or a walk. I'll give you the rest of probably about another 30 seconds, 45 maybe, we'll go again. We'll do one more. And then you can be on your way. 45 or 30 minute route. Heart is going so slowly, I might run into them with my stride. Three, two, and one. I'm gonna do it. See if I'm even moving faster, prompts them to hurry up. Not really. <laughs> and I'm catching them. There we go. And come to a jog or a walk. 30 minute crew thank you so much for joining today go ahead and take a picture share it on your social media leave an iTunes review come support us on Patreon those are three ways you can help me and support running for real if you're enjoying these together runs and we'll see you soon and you're also welcome to hang around for these reflection questions and I haven't ever heard these ahead of time okay but I did do a journal entry this morning that was answering all kinds of questions so I'm just going to ask you some of those okay so with each one I'll give you a minute or so to think about your answer and then I'll come along and do mine first one's an easy one well maybe best moment of 2022 what was it for you It's got to be an individual moment, not like a the three week vacation we took here, like a moment. more seconds okay thank you for answering my best individual moment was in Maui when I was surfing for three hours with Tim who was a man I met who's very very deeply spiritual and took me out surfing at his surf school. The moment was when I was watching him in his element, just, you know, in between my waves, he went out for a few and just watching someone so at ease with what they do, but there was no ego about it. Just beautiful to see. And then looking down, 
seeing my feet dangling with tattoos around uh, and just the coral below. It was just amazing. That was my moment. Okay. Next question. What was the fail of 2020-22 for you? You can list a few if you want. I don't say fail in terms of you are a horrible person, why didn't you see this coming? But literally, that's what helps us to grow and move on and become better. So what was a fail for you? Remember your mistakes. Don't make you a bad person. Don't make you a failure. Far from it. A few more seconds. Okay. Thank you for sharing or thinking, giving yourself the space to think. Mine was, well, this day two. I have a physical fail. That's what I wrote in my journal, which was my poison ivy incident. (laughs) Wiping with poison ivy makes for the most miserable poison ivy experience uh, when it's on your bum, (laughs) in your bum. So yep, that was a fail. And the other one that comes to mind was just not um, predicting ahead in terms of cash flow and just, um, I guess, kind of living in contentness, thinking that like I was con- going to continue to just be able to just do what I did and things would follow which they generally do but kind of not getting a bit complacent I suppose with just that I would always be okay when I knew and had been warned that I needed to protect myself a bit I needed to prepare a bit and I didn't I failed to do that again that doesn't make me a failure just means I made a mistake and I'm human Okay, one more reflection, and then she you know, I don't know. Kind of want to save our 2023 ones for the next run. It's a shame because I really would love to do a bit more, um, but I just don't think it's a good idea. Okay, so another reflection one on 2022. What did 2022 teach you? So let's go ahead and think about that. Did it teach you? starting to rain it's my sign of like don't go back on your work Tina (laughs) just 
a little bit longer. What did 2022 teach you? seconds. Okay. Thank you for taking the time to reflect, to be with yourself, for answering that question. What did 2022 teach me? I don't actually remember what I wrote down. I think it was some version of speaking up about something that is really, really important to you is always going to lead to something greater in the long run. And I say that with a caveat. I recently heard Jamila Jamil talk about, because she's such a passionate and kind of outspoken person, when she started speaking out, she started getting people reach out saying, why haven't you spoken about this topic or that topic? And she says that she did. And then she just got ripped apart because <coughs> she actually didn't know the full picture and she didn't have the knowledge and the education to be able to back it up. And so she said she's learned to only speak on the things that matter the most to her that she's educated and you know has the experience in and to the other things pass it along to someone else so when I say that I don't mean we should all you know be speaking up for Iranian women and the war in Ukraine and you know trafficking and everything while we want to change those things we got to stick to the ones that we are most affected by and most passionate about. So for me, 2022 taught me to speak up about climate in a way that felt right to me, even if that wasn't what the activists and scientists were telling me to do. Not that they spoke to me, but through what I got of their conversations. And as soon as I did it, things started to come together. That said, 2022 also taught me that I can have my integrity and my honour and my, you know, got to do what feels right for me in my heart. But I also need to consider that if I don't do the, the, the some of the work that I don't enjoy as much, it will come back to bite me because I can't literally carry out the things I want to if I'm not taking care of myself in other ways. So I guess I kind of had got into a place of just like doing what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And that's great. But like, again, it's not that long-term thinking that I need and we need. Okay, so we'll get one more question from you. I'll answer mine in the strides. We're going to do 2023 in the next Together Run. If you are someone who is a Patreon supporter, you'll get another Together Run next Monday. And it will be from Portland. Take you on a run in Portland. Otherwise, we'll do the reflection questions um, the following Monday for the rest of you on this feed. Um, So yeah. 2023 will cover that. So final question. What three words would you use to describe 2022? Let's go ahead and do that now. That's not Patrick. I would have stopped. 
Three words would you use to describe 2023? Final few seconds. And come to a walk. Or if you're going to go beyond us, you can keep on going. What, what three words would I describe? I actually did five words earlier, so this is a bit trickier. Um, spirit. Authenticity. And... Humbling. Those are the three words I'd use. Okay. Go ahead and take a picture. If you're running, you can keep on going, but if you're in with me in the 45-minute group, go ahead and take a picture. I want to tell you, see you right now. I want you to share it. As always, I really don't care what you look like or what your scenery is. I just want to be able to envision I'm running with you. When you share it on social media, that means so much to me, and it shows me that you're out here with me. You're... We're connected. So I really love to see it. So go ahead and do that if you can. All right, ready? We're going to do another stride. Three, two, and one. And come to a, well, jog or walk, whatever you want to do. It's weird doing it from walk, isn't it? Not used to that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do a body scan between these in your own time, in your own way. So just scan yourself down. Finishing up. I do one more stride, you ready? Three, two, and one. Come to the hi. I'm just recording, so I'll talk to you later. <laughs> and um, I want you to finish by, as you always do, connecting in some element of nature, grounding yourself, and uh, thanking yourself for allowing, allowing these reflection questions, allowing the space, the time. I know you could easily could have filled your run with a podcast or music to distract yourself but you didn't do that so well done for listening to you and uh yeah you're here on this earth and you matter thank you so much for joining me today friends if you're a patreon member and you can always join i'll see you on monday for another together run and if you're a regular listener i'll see you a week on Monday for another together run. I'll see you then.